Right. Next session, the VPN VXLAN multi-fabric. So these are the new features part of it. Uh, EVPN multi-hop and EVPN next hop self and the route map for the control plane. So I'll be joining with, for this session with Vincent. So this is the objective of this presentation is to provide a technical deep dive on EVPN VXLAN multi-fabric solution. It is scheduled for three hours, but we're going to split it in two parts. So because it's a really complex solution feature, right? that's why we did it this way. And we're going to provide a detailed analysis of the architecture. This will be your reference document to support any new deployments, really. We're going to have a comprehensive list of show commands, and we're going to provide the configuration files for reference. We also have packet capture files. If you want to refer to those or debugging. So highlights. These are previous stuff that we also added into this solution, right? But the focus is really the route map, the next hop self, the split horizon, and the tunnel bridging. So all these are previous features, up suppression, DHCP relay. But we wanted to combine everything as a full solution. <clears throat> That's why we added all these in the demo. This is the agenda. I'll be covering the overview use cases and hand over to Vincent for the details and caveats, configuration, best practices. Finally, I'll take over troubleshooting <clears throat> and that should be the end of part one. But if we have time, we might start a little bit on the demo. So that the demo will be handled by Vincent. So that's the plan. Overview, so lots of acronyms. I won't go through all of them, but you have this, you will have this deck and you will have it in case you need to refer back to it, right? The acronyms. <clears throat> so solution overview, basically 10 and I will add VPN VXLAN multi-fabric. The point is to scale beyond single VXLAN fabric limits. What's a single fabric? This is what it looks like right now or before 10.8, before 10.9. If you have a large campus split into multiple zones, Basically, all the VTAPs have full mesh, single hop. Why is it single hop? Because they you can't hop with an inter intermediate device, an intermediate VTAP. Right? They need to have full mesh, full, full mesh. So that's single fabric. Or if it's like different data centers or different sites, they all need to have full mesh. So that's the limit. You can't scale really beyond this data sheet limit of 256 BGP. EVPN peers. So that's control plane. But if you do VSX, you basically halve it on 28 because every switch will need to control plane. But if you use VSX, you, you'll basically get 128, right? So this is uh, this technology is applicable to both campus and data center, the extended deployments, but there are caveats. So we'll refer to that later on. Right now, the supported platform is only A325. So that's single fabric, full mesh, multi-fabric. What does it mean? So the same thing, if you have a large campus or multiple data centers, okay, the difference is now we split them to different fabrics. Uh, fabric one on the left, fabric two on the right. Okay. And within the fabric, we have full mesh still, full mesh tunnels, the orange, Things, those are tunnels, internal tunnels. So those are still full mesh within the fabric. But between fabrics, you have a blue external tunnel. <clears throat> so now you can see it's actually multi-hop because to get from this leftmost to the rightmost, you need to hop twice actually through two border VTAPs. So the border VTAPs will be the ones that connect both fabrics together. So that means now per fabric, you can have a data sheet limit of 256. EBGP VTAP peers within one fabric. So you can see this is how we scale beyond a single uh, VXLAN fabric VTAP limit. But take note, it doesn't mean that you have more MAC addresses. Right? So this whole thing is still limited by the number of MAC addresses on the lowest common denominator. For example, if you use 300, right, you can't add more MAC addresses because if you do share those MAC addresses, some will be dropped if you exceed those. Route map. So 10.9x support for these. 
uh, BGP EVPN route maps as well. It's really for VXLAN because EVPN is only used for VXLAN right now. And these are the different match conditions applicable that you can apply under the EVPN address family context. You can do IPv6, IPv4 address prefix list, guest path list, you can match on L2 and L3 VNI. You can set your local preference values, your AS path. You can prepend, exclude, set the IP next hop. So this is an example of what the EVPN route map can do. Okay, I have two fabrics here and I have a remote AS number here. So the objective is the, the border VTAP, preferred as the outbound VTAP for all traffic that's trying to get out to this AS number or routes towards this AS number. So what can you do? On VTAP 2, you would set the higher local preference for any routes learned from this AS number, set it higher local preference. And on border VTAP number 1, do the same thing you match on this AS number but you set it lower. So if, it, if VTAP 2 is higher, traffic will always use this to get out. Okay. Same thing for incoming traffic, you will set AS path prepending. So that's an example of what you can do with the EVPN route map, because you want to apply it on the EVPN route to learn. This is one example, but the main thing is, if it's multi-fabric, VXLAN, there are multiple ports or multiple fabrics within the site, you need to use this, EV, uh, this route map to set the next hop, IP next hop. Okay, we'll go through that later as well. Use cases. This is what we recommend for most of the customer deployments. Okay, keep it simple. One fabric, one AS number per site or per fabric. You can see I have three fabrics. They all have different AS numbers. 6501, 02, and 03. In this case, the, the limit is really 256 data sheet number, uh, EVPN peers per site, okay? and you do not require EVPN route maps. Keep it simple like this. But there are customers who actually need multiple fabrics per site. So now you can see site one has two fabrics or two ports. Site two has the same, you could have two or more, and then site three similar. So in this case, you do need EVPN route maps. On, we have something called a border leader. So in this case, you do not need to have control plane, EBGP peering, because there are different AS numbers. You need to use EBGP, right? Without a border leader, you need to have full mesh, control plane peering, but with a, something we call a border leader in each site, each site will have one border leader. So those border leaders will peer to Every other border leader in different sites and within its own site appear to the other border VTAPs. So with that, you need EVPN route maps because of this border leader. You want to inform other sites the correct next hop to build your tunnels. Okay. So EVPN route map in the past is really limited to IBGP and limited to the route maps were limited to IPv4 and IPv6 address family could modify the local preference and your AS path prepending, but again, within the IBGP and within the IPv4 and IPv6 address family. With 10.9, you can actually do it now on the EVPN address family instead, and even different fabrics and the multi-AS, uh, multi-fabric use cases. Okay, so this example, I want to show you for layer three multi-fabric. This example, I kept it simple. I just use single VTAPs here, but we, in production, you should be using the sex logical VTAPs for high availability. You should have two, two everywhere. Okay, the example will be host one in VRF one on the right, trying to communicate with host two in the same VRF, in a different subnet, in a different fabric. Okay, this is layer three because layer three means we need to route. So we assume that all your control plane is done, your peering is done, your tunnels are up okay, now, and your routes are learned. So now, for example, VTAP1 here, he knows about the remote host IP and his routing table. He knows about it. So when traffic starts from host one to host two, 
host one will actually do a lookup in his routing table. You check for the destination IP in the VR1 routing table. He, so he sees this IP 1047. It has a next hop IP of the border VTAP2. And it's via layer 3 VNR because we're using symmetric RV. It will be through the layer 3 VR, VNI. So VTAP1 will encapsulate and forward that traffic. Because encapsulate in the VXLAN, forward that to next hop IP of border VTAP2. So border VTAP2, do the same, same thing. Do a lookup, check the destination IP in the VRF routing table. He will see that it has a next hop IP of border VTAP3. It's via L3 VNI again. What border VTAP will do actually is tunnel to tunnel forwarding. You will get it in to the orange and forward it out to the blue towards border VTAP3. Same thing, border VTAP3 will do a lookup, look for this IP address. See it has an XHOP or VTAP4 via L3VNI. And you also do tunnel to tunnel forwarding, blue to orange, and an XHOP of VTAP4. Finally, at VTAP number four, he will do a lookup and see that the host is directly connected. He will forward out, he will decap and forward out to host two. Take note, multi-fabric, right? VPN, VSLAN, multi-fabric is really only required on the border VTAPs here. So VTAP1, VTAP4 could be other uh, VTAPs that do not support multi-fabric, like 6300, 6400, right? CX10,000, for example, could have those devices here. They do not need support VPN, VXLAN, multi-fabric. So let's cover layer two multi-fabric next. Very similar, but now it's layer two. So we have two hosts on the same subnet now. So host one and host two, they're connected to the same L2 VNI, the same VLAN. They want to communicate okay, through the multi-fabric. But because by default, for bump traffic, there is something called VXLAN split horizon. That means Traffic, bump traffic learned from a tunnel will not be forwarded out into other VXN tunnel. So because of that default behavior, it basically blocks your L2 traffic. Okay. So we need to actually disable this split horizon between the IBGP and EBGP. We have this broadcast group because there are different AS numbers. If you enable this CLI, it, we, it will disable that split horizon so that you can forward between the IBGP and EBGP broadcast groups. Once you enable that knob, same thing. We assume that the control plane and the tunnels are built and all your MAC addresses are advertised and learned. If host one is trying to communicate with host two, this is what VTAP one does. He'll do a lookup. You'll see that the destination MAC of host two, he'll do a lookup in the MAC table, you can see. Layer three was the routing table, VRF routing table, but layer two, you look at the MAC table. You see that the next hop is via border VTAP2 and it's via the L2 VNI instead of the L3 VNI. Okay. You encapsulate and forward that traffic of a next hop IP of border VTAP2. So border VTAP2 will do a lookup for that destination MAC. And you see that next hop is via border VTAP3. You will do tunnel to tunnel forwarding from the orange to the blue, and there's no split horizon because of that CLI knob. You enable between the IBGP and EBGP broadcast groups. You forward that traffic to border VTAP3. Border VTAP3 will do a lookup for the destination MAC, and you will see that it has a next hop of VTAP4 via L2 VNI. Same thing, he also do a tunnel to tunnel forwarding from the blue to the orange. Again, because of that knob, there's no split horizon. This, you can forward that traffic correctly towards VTAP4. VTAP4, if I do a final lookup, you see the destination MAC is a directly connected host. You will decap and forward to the host number two. Same thing. Your multi-fabric capability is only required on the border VTAPs or the border leaders. VTAP1 and VTAP4 do not need to support this function. 
So I mentioned that the route map is required. Why? Because you see the EBGP control plane between the different sites, if there are multiple fabrics, is done through the border leader. The border VTAPs here, they do not peer to each other. So you do need the next hop set to inform the other sites the correct next hop IP to build a tunnel. And once that is done, you can see a full mesh, data plane, the extent tunnel. So this is dynamic. The tunnels are built dynamically, but the control plane is manual. You need to specify who are your peers in order to build this full mesh tunnel. So with that, I'll hand over to Vincent.